So in this tutorial, I'll be talking about functions and function arguments in Python. So we have actually discussed about general functions and what functions are actually used for before. Uh, but I'll actually briefly explain what functions are and uh, how we actually use them. And then we'll actually discuss about arguments in function. So functions are actually used when we want to execute a same block of code multiple times. So if we want to actually execute something like print hello world multiple times uh, in your program, uh, maybe in this program, uh, in maybe different files of the same program, you can actually do that with file with functions in python so say for an example i need this i need to actually print this hello world in different parts of this program or uh, in other parts of the same program i can actually pass this to a function so i actually do that by saying def and i'll say greet or something and then i'll actually pass this under this and now we can actually access this uh, in different parts of the same program so to actually access the, this function you to, you have to actually call it and we do that by actually saying greet and this is how we actually execute the function so if we just run the program we can see that hello world has been printed and if I just don't execute this or if I just don't call this and if I just run this nothing will be printed or nothing will be executed because we haven't actually called that function we can also pass in arguments as uh, inside a function. For example, uh, I can actually take a name here. I'll say name. So I can actually pass in arguments like this. Uh, so I say name here. And then uh, instead of printing out hello world, we can actually use the formatted strings and we can actually, I'll say hello name. So now, Whenever we actually execute this function, we have to give this name parameter here. So, so this can be anything. So inside quotes, I'll say John. And if I run the program, it says hello John. And uh, if you actually don't specify this argument and run the program, you'll get an error saying it is missing one required positional argument called name. So you have to actually specify this. Uh, so, so this is how a function works. So you can actually pass in arguments and different things to a function. So now we have actually discussed about function. Now let's actually see how to pass arguments to function. Uh, so uh, let's assume that I have a function here called function f u n c l c func, and then I'll take in three arguments a b and c and then we actually have to print this a b and c out and we'll print both all these three of them and we can actually execute the function by saying func and we have to specify the values for a b and c we can either do this this way we can actually uh, pass in the values and if i run the program it will actually print out one two and three and we can also do this uh, by specifying keyword arguments. By that I mean we can actually say a is equal to 1 and I can actually say b is equal to 2 and I can say c is equal to 3. So now actually while specifying arguments like this uh, by specifying it as keyword arguments uh, we can actually uh, specify it in any order. So for example uh, I can actually bring the b here and I can actually say uh, c is equal to 3 or whatever I want because we are actually specifying what is what. Uh, so we can actually run this and we'll still get the same result. But if you don't specify this, if you simply say uh, 1, 2, 3, it will be printed in the order you actually uh, executed it. So here the first position is considered a and the second one b and third one c so if you want to actually specify uh, if you want to actually use the keyboard arguments then this need not be in the uh, any any order you can do it in whatever way you want so one thing you have to actually note is you cannot pass 
arguments after keyword arguments so uh, for example uh, i cannot actually say a is equal to 1 b is equal to 2 and after that instead of specifying c is equal to some number or something you cannot actually simply give it a number here and uh, if i just run this this will actually return an error saying it follows keyword argument so uh, you cannot actually specify an argument after a keyword argument so in order to actually fix this you can actually say c is equal to and that will be fixed now you can also pass in some default value for some items so for example i can say d is equal to 4 or 5 if i want so now uh, now here uh, there is no need to actually specify or uh, there is no need to specify a value for d uh, because we have already specified it here so if i just run this program uh, it will actually complete without any error but if we just want to modify uh, the value of d just in case you can actually do that by saying d is equal to maybe 7 or whatever you want in this case uh, okay we have to actually print d out as well so now if we just run this you can see that it has been printed and even if you remove it it's not a big deal because we have a default value for that and that default value will be printed if you just don't specify any other values now we are actually going to discuss about args and quarks in python so uh, so we don't need this anymore so i can actually define a function I can actually define a function called function and uh, we'll pass in some arguments just like before and along with this we are going to pass the args and quarks argument so uh, I can actually say after an ar asterisk you can say args and with double asterisk you can say quarks now this args and quarks can be anything uh, you can actually say c here and it's actually the same thing but usually uh, this is actually mentioned to as args and quarks and uh, so what are, so what are these actually used for so why are we actually supplying these args and quarks here so the answer is now we can actually pass infinite number of arguments or keyword arguments by infinite uh, i mean uh, we can pass in any number of arguments we want actually so for example i'll print a and b here in this case and if i just execute this function and i'll say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 uh, and or whatever numbers you want and if we just run this you can see that we didn't get an error because we used args method here so now we can actually pass in any number of arguments uh, the same applies for quarks so now we can actually pass in any number of keyword arguments as well but make sure that you need this a and b this a and b is necessary now we can actually say maybe uh, we can pass in any number of keyword arguments so i can say maybe one is equal to five uh, six is equal to six or whatever these are called keyword arguments so now we can actually pass any number of them and you will not get any errors so now just to print out this as well so we will say for arg in args we will print out the args arg and now uh, we also have to print out the quarks so we will say quark or for we will say for key in quarks because this is actually a dictionary so we need to actually access the key value uh, we will say print quark or key in this case so now if we just run this program you can see that uh, it has actually been printed out so that is the use of args and quarks uh, with args and quarks you can actually pass in any number of arguments or keyword arguments uh, so next we are actually going to talk about forced keyword arguments so uh, let's remove this sometimes you only want keyword arguments so you can actually force to use that so uh, to actually do that let me declare a function here called function 
and I'll pass in some arguments A, B and after that I'll pass in an asterisk and then C and D. Uh, now let's print A, B, now let's also print C and D out. Now if I just want to execute this function, uh, I can specify A and B just like this. But uh, everything after this asterisk symbol has to be a keyword argument. So I cannot simply say 3 and 4. That will be an error. PyCharm is already indicating that it's an error. So we have to actually pass this as a keyword argument. So I'll have to say C is equal to 10 maybe and then D is equal to 11 or whatever you want. Now this will be executed. Uh, if I just simply specify this, it should actually surely return an error. PyCharm is already indicating it as an error. And we are actually getting some kind of error saying uh, we have only we should only pass in two arguments. So this is how we can actually use forced keyword arguments. We can force the users to actually use keywords, keyword arguments. Now let's talk about unpacking of functions. So I have a function here. Uh, it accepts three parameters a, b, and c, and then it actually prints out a, b, and c, and now if we just execute the function I can actually say function execute it and uh, now actually uh, instead of passing in the arguments directly here I can pass in a list as an argument so for example let me say I have a list called li and I can pass in arguments like one two three and now I can actually pass this list as an argument this is called unpacking of function so I can actually say uh, asterisk and then li so this is how we do it and now if we just run this program you can see that 1 2 and 3 has been actually accepted as the values uh, for this a b and c so now uh, you just have to make sure that the number of elements inside this list is actually equal to the number of arguments here so if I pass in an extra extra argument and if we just run the program that will actually uh, take us to an error we'll get an error saying uh, we only have to pass in three positional arguments but we actually passed in four uh, so we have to just make sure that we pass in only the equal number of arguments now we can also do the unpacking of dictionaries so instead of list here I can actually say my dictionary and uh, my dictionary and I'll just pass in a dictionary here and I'll say a is 1 and I can say b is 2 and I can also say c is 3 uh, yeah c I have to close this here and now if I say c is 3 so now instead of passing in the list I can pass in the dictionary and uh, in dictionary we have to actually make sure we pass in two asterisks uh, because these are keyword arguments so now if I just run this program you can see that one two three has been printed successfully we are able to pass in dictionary as, as arguments and this is called unpacking of functions now let's actually discuss about global and local variables uh, inside a function so I can actually define a function here similar to before so now I'm not, not actually passing in any arguments here so now before actually doing anything inside a function I'll actually come here and I'll say number is equal to 10 I can set a value or a variable called number and set its value to 10 so now I can actually access that number variable uh, I can actually say x is equal to number and then if I just print and if I just print x and uh, now if we just execute the function okay so uh, I have actually de declared the number 10 above this and uh, now uh, I just have to say x is equal to number and if I just print x and run the program you can see that x is equal to 10 gets printed but uh, the, we can only view the number uh, we cannot actually modify the number because this is actually uh, not inside this function and this is actually a global variable so so we cannot just modify it I cannot just say number is equal to 11 uh, maybe here if I just say number is equal to 11 here and I run the program 
you can see that this has been modified so now uh, if I just say number is equal to 11 and uh, I just execute the function and print the value for number uh, I just run the program you can see that the first value that is the function executed and printed the value of x which is 11 so the number value has been modified but uh, the original number value which was inside this entire program this value here has not been modified it is still 10 so how do we fix this so in order to actually uh, modify this globally we have to use the global keyword so I'll just come here and I'll say global number and now we are actually accessing this number variable and uh, now we have actually modified the value to 11 and uh, now let's see what both of them actually prints if we run the program we can see that both of them have been modified and both of them are 11 now so so a local variable is something that is inside a function and can be modified or uh, accessed um, in inside a function and global variables can be accessed everywhere inside the program